moment now to bow in your presence. Lord God, we live to serve you, to honour you, to worship you. You call us, you draw us, you prompt us, you push us. Lord God, to be your people, your disciples, your hands and feet. Thank you, God, that we can hear your voice. Hear your leading, know your calling upon our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us, loving us, rescuing us, and providing for us. Lord, over these next few moments, Father God, I pray that you speak to us from your word afresh. In Jesus' name. Amen. Started a little theme last week. Hello! God is calling. If you didn't already know, he's got your number. His phone doesn't run out or run flat. I'm lucky and fortunate about that. We are the called out ones. The church. The assembly of believers. We are the gathered and the scattered. And we've certainly known that. We are the local and the global. We are the church of Jesus Christ. As a follower of his, you are called, you are gifted, you are chosen, you are set apart. In the book of Ephesians, verse 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, we read, Therefore I, Paul says, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. So if you are wondering about that, there is your answer. Live a life worthy of your calling. Now, friends, church isn't just an add-on. Something we fit in when we're not too busy. Or there's not a family commitment or a job to do. Or I've got to go to that sporting thing or see that movie or do that thing. No, church is not just an added-on activity. Make it a priority as we be His church here in this community, called by God. Just don't go to church, be the church. The presence and person of Jesus Christ out there and in here, being real and authentic and missional. Be his hands and feet. In this complicated climate, I know some of you have been worn out and worn down and emotionally exhausted and physically drained and spiritually discouraged. But friends, let us persevere. The devil can't destroy you. He might try to discourage you. But let us keep going. Keep going. It's worth it. It matters. You matter, I matter, we matter. The church of Jesus Christ matters. For we are his people, his hands and feet, called to important tasks. No doubt some of you have been exhausted, fatigued, discouraged over this year and month. And months. Self-doubt. Spiritual opposition. Let us keep passionate. Let us keep on track. Let us continue to focus on what matters because God has called you and God has called me. Let's embrace that as we be His people. What am I called to? God calls you to salvation and discipleship. 
Before God calls you to a role or a job, He calls you, He draws you to Himself. I love what Matthew 6, 33 says. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek those things. Focus on those things. God calls us. God draws us to be set apart and to live a holy life. God calls you to serve. God calls you to care. Use your gifts. Use your time. Use your talents. Use what is planted within you. In his church and out in the community. It may be very specific or it may not. From Colossians 3.17 last week. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, honour God. Whatever you do. Serve one another. Whatever you do, champion his cause. Is God calling me? Yes. But how do I know? How do I know if I'm ready? How do I know if I'm good enough? Or how do I know if I know enough? I don't feel ready. I don't feel like... 1 Corinthians 1 26 might be for you today. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Amen. Let's see those hands. So, except the wise ones. And not many were influential. Not many were of a noble birth. God calls everyday, ordinary people just like me. And maybe just like you. Untrained, unqualified, untalented. We're just a club of nobodies. Do you want to join me? Where's those nobodies? What about those disciples? That was a bunch, wasn't it? Have you ever checked out their resumes? In Acts 4.13, we get a little glimpse of Peter and John. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realised that they were unschooled, ordinary, dumb old bloke. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Good old blokes, yep. Yeah. They were astonished and they took note that these men had been with who? Jesus. Jesus. That's what made the difference. That's what the, has made the difference in my life and in my family. And as I serve and care and no doubt, that's made the difference in your life too. Because of Jesus. Where on earth would we have been without Jesus? Maybe some of you would be dead in all seriousness. Lost. Cast adrift. In a shambles. I don't know. What about your story? No doubt it's complicated. No doubt it's messy. But Jesus comes and stands in the middle of that and brings restoration and rescue. Yes, it won't all be great. But God is with us because he calls us and draws us to himself. When God comes calling, it may be gradual, maybe a leading, a longing, a desire, a push, a shove. Uh, are you sure, God? Or maybe this is what I've wanted all my life. And now is the time. Maybe that was you. Sometimes the criticism from people confirms the calling of God. Two things to look at today. 
Calling costs. Remember Saul before he was Paul? Blinded on that road to Damascus? Saul, the Christian killer, became the people's saver in Jesus' name. And just pick up the story as, as we hear about Ananias and what God says to him to do in Acts 9. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles. And I'm sure Ananias said, Are you sure, God, have you got the right bloke? To proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel, I will show you how much he must suffer for my name. Saul became Paul. A total transformation. We quote him a lot because he wrote quite a bit of the Bible. The end bit at the back. <laughs> Inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. The moment you step into your calling and step out of your comfort zone, God will meet you there. Scared, criticised, misunderstood, but we're persevering with God. God will often use our deepest pain to launch us into our greatest calling. Yes, we're scared. Yes, we're unsure. But God, I'm hanging on to you and I'm taking a step. A step of faith. Because I know you will meet me there at the crossroad of life. You might think you've got nothing to offer. But God can use you. Oh, I'm old. Oh, I'm tired. You can pray. You can care. You can encourage somebody. You can love somebody. You can let somebody know that Jesus loves them too. Friends, serving Jesus is a gift and a grind. Living your calling is a thrill and a burden. Ministry is exhilarating, but also sometimes exhausting. If following Jesus isn't the greatest gift and the greatest burden, you're probably not doing the right thing. The greatest gift and the greatest burden. Let us never sacrifice our call on the altar of comfort. Second thing, God's calling sustains us. The call sustains us, it carries us, it keeps us focused and keeps us going. How on earth did Paul endure at all? It was because of the call of God upon his life. Persecuted, tortured, imprisoned, whipped, stoned, nearly drowned, bitten by snakes, beaten, abandoned, betrayed, falsely accused, wrongly imprisoned. All because of Jesus. All because of him. Paul didn't finish the race well because he was competent. He finished the race because he was called and focused. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Forgetting what, were, what is behind and straining to what is ahead. A lot was behind. I press on towards the goal to win the prize which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Keep the faith, friends. Run the race. Run the race well. Hardest year of ministry, hardest year of church, many are saying. But with hardship, comes opportunity and creativity. 
And as a congregation and a community of believers, we have stepped up, we have stepped out, we have given, we have served, we have changed stuff, we have tried stuff, we have re-energized stuff, we are doing stuff. For He has called us to be His church. We have cared for you and served you and we will continue to do that. Don't quit. Keep going. Keep focusing. Perplexed, not in despair. Persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down, not destroyed. Don't walk away from God. Don't walk away from His call. His mission. Be a disciple of His. Romans 11, 29. For God's gift and His call can never be withdrawn. Hello, for God is calling us. It cannot be revoked. It cannot be recall, recalled. It cannot be withheld, withdrawn, annulled. For God's gifts and His calling can never be withdrawn. Hear His voice. It might be as simple as come, follow me. Come, trust me. Come, serve me. Hey, I've got this job for you to do. Trust me. In 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 and 12, as I finished this morning, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. We pray for you. That his name may be glorified in you. Whatever your role, whatever your task, whatever your call, whatever your job, whatever your mundane donkey duty from last week, may God be glorified in you and you and you up over there and you over there, every one. That is our prayer and that is our hope. For God is calling us. May he bless you. In Jesus' name. We will stand and sing. Thank you, ladies. With great voices and great talent. And God's hand is upon your life. So thank you.